In this lecture about the visual display of data, we'll be looking at maximizing the information or ink to space ratio, eliminating wasted space, and adding a little bit of information. So the first thing that we want to do is think about the ink to space ratio. We don't really want to waste a bunch of space on the page, right? If we're making a figure, it shouldn't have a whole bunch of empty space. So we want to minimize the empty or useless space. I always want to think about what other things we can add to the plots, right? What else can we add, kind of like in the previous lecture. But we also have to be cautious that we don't add a bunch of useless stuff that just kind of gets in the way. Uh, ideally, we'd like to design a plot to show multiple types of data on the same plot. But then, of course, we also have to be aware of being too complicated, right? There are particular style conventions, right? Figures that people are used to. So we don't want to make something that's too fancy and complicated if it doesn't need to be, or if it just adds confusion to people without adding understanding. So here's some data from Long Beach. This is recent data on the percentage of students across a variety of years that are first generation college students and uh, seems to be around 20 or something. And that's interesting data. But without context, we don't know if that's high or low, right? Other four years master's schools, what percentage of their students are first generation? So this is a perfectly good figure, although there's a bunch of wasted space up here. But if we had extra context, it would be even better. So something like this, this is the percent of students that are non-native English speakers. And similar institutions in the US, now we have context, 5.8. So if we know that these values of around 20, which were very similar to the ones in the previous slide, if we know that the comparative value of other schools is about 6%, we can see that actually Long Beach has three to four times as many non-native English speakers as similar universities. And that puts these very similar numbers in a whole different light. Here's data for parental income below 20,000 a year, the same years. The values here are a little bit lower. Now our context is 9.5%. And again, that context is essential because these numbers are similar to the previous ones, but we can actually see that now they're closer to the average for universities like this. But it's actually kind of hard to read, right? By the time we're getting all the way down here, like, I don't know, is that a 15 or a 14? And like, what is the real difference between these? So what we can do is we can add numbers, right? We can actually add the numbers on top. These label bars are much easier to read. And now we can actually directly compare these numbers to this kind of reference frame here. So we've added a little bit of information to the plot to make it a little easier to read and understand. This is percent of students living with their family. And you can see across the same years, now the values are much higher and much, much higher than the reference universities, about four times higher. So this tells us something about Cal State Long Beach students, right? About four times as many of them as a percentage of the population live at home with their family, which sounds kind of lame, but that's okay. I lived at home with my family too when I went to college. But you can see these label bars make it easier to read. This is nice, good practice for these sorts of bar charts. Um, this sort of practice can be used. This is a speech from a Republican politician here. She's basically blaming Obama for the unemployment rate skyrocketing in 2009. She's color coding the Republican administration in red and then showing how everything jumps up in blue when Obama took over, right? So of course we can kind of see that's a continuation of this trend, but by coloring these bars, and then she also puts the numbers on top, she's making her point about the numbers that she's trying to convey. Finally, we have this figure here, which is kind of similar. It's a bar chart. Um, this is from the government 1973, um, but we can actually see this is a terrible figure, right? So it doesn't go up to 100%, right? So that height is kind of arbitrary. We could have it go up to 30% or 25% or 20%. And in fact, these bars, this one is superfluous because this is total participation. This is in college, university. This is adult education. This plus this equals this. So here's a huge figure that is really just representing two numbers, 
like an eight and an eight and a half or something like that. So there's a ton of wasted space. This whole left column is superfluous. This figure is not really doing a very good job of summarizing information. It's actually probably making it harder to understand just two numbers. So in the next lecture, we'll see more examples of bad figures and then also some examples of good figures.